Good day, everyone. I'm very excited uh, to talk to you about my favorite topic, which is how can technology drive growth for India? India is already on the journey of uh, digitalization, how to create more value out of it. And I'm looking forward to adding technology angle to it and reach the target of 1 trillion digitally driven economy for our country. With that, I just wanna show you how evolution has happened in this space which I work in. I work for semiconductors and I wanna just give you a brief journey of what happened in the semiconductor space over the last you know, 40, 50 years. So let's talk about 1980. 1980, you know, we had already built um, second or third microprocessor generation. Uh, we called it 8088. It started with 8086, 8088. And, uh, you know, it had uh, 20,000 some uh, transistors and uh, it worked at a frequency of uh, something like, uh, you know, five to 10 megahertz. So if you think of, you know, what kind of frequencies we are working with, we're working with, you know, five gigahertz, 10 gigahertz, or so 5,000 megahertz. So starting with, you know, in 1980, five megahertz to now 5,000 megahertz is the journey we have traversed. 1990, uh, you know, um, a decade later, everything was associated with networking. How do we connect? How do we leverage networking into our lives? Then came an era where it was mobile everything. Before that, let me tell you that United States, you know, a country which was 10, 15, 20 years ahead of us in the year 1983 already was leveraging, you know, cell phones. Ours came a year later, 1993, 1995 is when we had our, you know, mobile phone and rest is history. India became, you know, a mobile driven, mobile first driven economy. You know, the number of, uh, you know, users we had grew exponentially and a lot of, uh, you know, technology, whether uh, it was, you know, FinTech or et cetera, we know has been driven by uh, mobile phones. While mobile everything was happening between 2000, 2010, came 2020, you know, a decade later, we realized that the compute in your handset or compute in your desktop or laptop was not enough. So cloudification was the requirement. How can we leverage the tremendous amount of compute storage, uh, movement, artificial intelligence based value add through cloudification and then bega began the era of cloud everything. Now, what happens post 2020? Post 2020, we believe is an era of distributed intelligence. Not only will you at one end have your uh, user equipment, whether it is your laptop, desktop, your cell phone, or uh, you know any compute that's within your home, all the way to smaller clouds, which we call edge. And then the actual cloud which you know, we can leverage. So from the user equipment to the edge, to the cloud is the era of distributed computing. We also believe that the multiple devices, you know, several hundred billion devices will be all connected. They will all be communicating, data will be in the air and information will be traveling here then there. We used to talk about it historically, you know, roads or highways, which defined, uh, you know, growth of a country. People would say geography defined because, you know, rivers and roads defined. Today, it's the digital highway, the connectivity, the connected devices, which will be driving the growth of a country. I will also tell you a simple thing that will give you an understanding of what happened over the last 20 years. So, you know, I said in the year 2000, we were focusing on, mobile phones, networking and everything. Let me give you an example. In the year 2000, if we wanted to do 
something like a genome sequencing for a human being, which you know typically is around one teraflop. Let me tell you how much did it cost? It would cost $50 million. And the space it would require is three one bedroom apartment or one three bedroom whole kitchen kind of an apartment. That's the kind of space it would take just 20 years ago. $50 million, one genome sequencing, three bedroom whole kitchen like space. To now in 2020, we can do one teraflop for a genome sequencing in $100 in the palm of your hand, which means a cell phone. That is what has happened to the semiconductor industry. And I really want to share uh, Dr. G uh, Gordon Moore, you know, one of Intel's co-founder. He said, if the automotive industry saw a similar kind of advancement or a revolution like the semiconductors, then a Rolls Royce like a car for a, milli uh, a gallon of petrol would run half a million miles. And I know my car, it's not a Rolls Royce for sure, but it gives me uh, 10 miles per gallon. And we are talking half a million miles is the kind of change that we've seen in the semiconductor industry. Huge change, huge amount of uh, revolution rather than evolution, and therefore tremendous amount of opportunity. So now let me map what the semiconductor saw in terms of transforming the world to what was happening in India. So going to my next slide, I'm gonna split the three phases of evolution. So I talked about you know, 1980s to 2020. Let me just show you 10 years post 1980, what was happening in India. So 1990 to the year 2000, we witnessed a lot of economic liberalization. With economic liberalization, a lot of you know, foreign direct investment started pouring in. You know, our IT services, our BPOs, our software services became very critical and uh, significant for the world. You know, we almost became synonymous to software. India means services, India means software, and India was driving IT and BPO. Very large number of people focusing on IT services, BPO for the world. During this time, many uh, MNCs and R&D centers establish themselves in India. And I know that Intel, uh, Intel in India started, you know, 23 some years ago. So somewhere around this time, we also set up our establishment. A lot of change was being driven. A lot of learnings was happening. And we realized that, you know, while services is great, software is great, why don't we also focus on design and engineering like activity? You know, between 2000 to 2010, significant amount of wireless comms and growth happened. I talked about, you know, US saw cell phone in 1983, India saw in 1993, and a large scale started happening around this time. While wireless communication was growing, consumer electronics was also growing. Auto segment was growing significantly. And I know that uh, you know, India today sees 1% of the world's uh, you know, vehicles that run in our country. It seems like a smaller number, but it's significant growth happened around this time, 2000 to 2010. Um, there is a lot of connection to semiconductors and automotives, and I'm really tempted to say that the world is seeing a lot of shortfall of semiconductors and uh, you know auto segment is also going through tremendous amount of revolution no longer is the combustible engine the engine of the future the engine of the future is ev with ev the amount of semiconductor usage is going to be huge you know and in in a, uh, a conference in munich in uh, europe my ceo called out 
that by 2025, 2026, we believe, or you know, around that time, 20% of a car's cost is going to be semiconductors. So there's a lot of relationship to why you know, many of these industries are going through revolution. Semiconductor is becoming a base ingredient for many of them. Now, what happened in the last 10 years? I think last 10 years is a history that India will play a significant role in. In 2010 to 20, 700 million internet users got created in India. 1.2 billion mobile phone users. So, you know, while uh, uh, I am excited about the 1.2 billion mobile phone users, which is about 70-ish percent penetration, I'm also excited about the growth in desktop and laptop, uh, you know, penetration. The world saw 20% increased sales of, you know, PCs and laptops. And not a, not a wonderful moment to remember as to why a lot of this growth was driven. It was driven by you know, the world pandemic, COVID-19, but regardless, it's penning what the future of the world is gonna look like. A lot of national level platforms got established, you know, Aadhaar to name one, uh, unified payment interface to name another. As a result, a lot of global, fintech establishment establishments happened in india a lot of adoption in fintech also happened out of india while a lot of these things were happening in terms of you know uh, digitalization i think manufacturing was also a focus that india put its mind on software was great design services was great you know leveraging internet leveraging connectivity, leveraging mobile phones, all good. But we also focused on how do we drive manufacturing? So a lot of mobile phone manufacturing started happening, uh, you know, out of India. Uh, very many companies started looking at uh, building their, uh, you know, supply chain kind of an ecosystem out of India. To name, you know, Apple and Samsung, uh, started looking at India. So a lot of changes were happening uh, while, uh, you know, COVID hit us. Uh, many uh, adoption of technologies happened for the world. Um, cell phones, uh, PCs, laptops became essential for survival in, in the last two, three years. I want to tell you that while a lot of this digital uh, transformation was happening, uh, how did India uh, show its innovation and the need for its country? So going to the next slide, I want to share with you, while this evolution was happening, let me share some numbers with you. So I told you that uh, you know, we have about 1.2 uh, uh, billion kind of uh, mobile phones. If you look at smartphones, 48%, you know, I like to think half uh, of 48% of growth of population had smartphones as compared to 2014. 2014 had 9% population with smartphones, 2019, 50%. It was not just simply buying these devices. It was because the monthly data consumption was increasing. You know, the monthly data consumption grew at a CAGR of 175%. From 2014, when, uh, you know, 123 million people had smartphones, the data consumption was 0 0.1 uh, GB. To 2019, it became almost 10 GB. And it only became 10 GB because India drove a lot of innovation in cost of data. 2014 was very high, three to $5 versus 2019, about a quarter, 25 cents is what the cost. And just to tell you, India is so advanced in terms of cost of data. If you look at you know, some of the 
countries like a US, Europe, Australia, the cost uh, you know, of data per GB is 10 to $15. Our 2014 was also not that because affordability was not that. So our consumption grew because innovation was happening. Number of people with digital ID. Similarly, today we believe, you know, almost all of India has a, uh, you know, digital ID, Aadhaar that I talked about. And if you look at the, you know, number of bank uh, linked to our uh, unique identification, uh, it grew from, uh, you know, 100 million to 1,000 uh, million. Also, what I want to say is, if you look at, uh, you know, the transaction, the digital transaction in India, it's almost double of what China sees. So China sees about 16 billion um, and India sees 30 billion. So India is getting ready for setting itself up on a growth path with digitalization. No longer, I believe, that petrol and oil is going to define, you know, a country's wealth or a country's, uh, you know, GDP or growth. It's going to be data and it's going to be the infrastructure for the data such that data plus infrastructure creates value. And I can clearly see that India is setting itself up to build these national level platforms, which not, are nothing but infrastructure for me and look at what are the areas, what are the problems that the country has that we need to solve with this data and the infrastructure? Is it in the area of health? Is this in the area of you know, economic growth, enabling people to participate in selling products using digital wallet like capabilities? So a lot of thanks to the government, the policies, the national level platforms, the investments, like I said, in the digitalization and building these platforms, I truly believe we have set ourselves a great foundation for G2C, B2C, and B2B services and offerings. I want to just end this slide with, in the year 2020, which was COVID stricken, not just for India, but for the world, we manufactured $76 billion worth of cell phones, mobile phones. And like I said, you know, mobile phone manufacturing um, from significant companies like Apple and Samsung is happening out of India. And there are a lot of their suppliers are setting up factories. I also believe, you know, automotive is the next segment for India where we are already manufacturing, you know, several cars, Indian cars, you know, um, foreign cars out of India, not just for India need, but the need of other countries as well. So I believe that automotive manufacturing is also going to create a revolution that India will participate in. And of course, you think auto, you cannot not think semiconductors. I'll tell you a story. I was in US um, maybe you know, a few months back and I went to get myself a car that I wanted to rent. And for a month, uh, typically, for this mid-sized car for a month, I would pay $500. I was shocked for the same car. They were asking me $5,000. I said, what happened? They said, you know, during the downtimes, we got rid of many cars. And now we don't have cars. We cannot buy those cars because those cars are facing semiconductor shortage. And of course, the semiconductor shortage was semiconductors was looking at enabling lives of people in the world to drive health, to drive education. So many of those semiconductors went into the devices which were needed for living life for the world. And as a result, auto um, you know, segment kind of suffered. So as digitalization is happening, as the world is moving towards growth driven by uh, you know, um, these kind of solutions, semiconductors will play a critical, critical role. Not only semiconductors, some technologies which are gonna be based on data will play a huge role. While India was synonymous to software, time is now that India needs to be synonymous to data. 
India needs to be synonymous to AI. India needs to be synonymous to deep technology. If we are wealthy with people, if we are wealthy with data, because people generate data, I often say India is a country of 1.3 billion data generating factories. And the democracy of it makes it easier for companies, for entrepreneurs, for uh, you know, a government to leverage its data for the good of its own people. So going to the next slide, I want to talk about how we believe we can leverage the wealth that we have, the wealth in terms of AI and deep technology that we are building. So while if you look at, uh, you know, up till now, I think we have had, I would say 60,000 startups. Um, but a lot of these startups were, uh, you know, based on software, uh, e-retail uh, kind of, uh, you know, focus areas. But I'm happy to tell you that now we have, you know, about 2,500 deep tech startups. Each year from the year 2017, we have been adding 500 plus deep tech startups. Deep tech startups, which are looking at quantum, which are looking at, uh, you know, technologies for uh, security. Uh, we are looking at technologies that enable faster connectivity, 5G like things. So focusing on IPs. So we are looking at, uh, you know, AR, VR, uh, ML, AI, uh, robotics, you name it. I'm also happy to say that bulk of our funding um, uh, came in the year 2020 for the deep tech startups. Also the projection is India will see a $500 billion uh, growth uh, just based on AI and data by 2025. And the deep tech startups, like I said, about uh, you know, two thirds of our deep tech uh, landscape is AI and IoT. So I really believe that India has an opportunity to drive vertical solutions, very niche, very focused, as well as drive efficiency through platform uh, driven solution. So going to the next slide, I want to quickly summarize that COVID has led to a lot of uh, acceleration. Uh, you know, just quickly highlighting our digital adoption grew by 3x. I'll tell you Zoom calls, we are recording our, our talk on Zoom calls. Zoom call usage grew by 30x. I will also talk about e-commerce. E-commerce, you know, uh, increased by 20% in, uh, in India. Let me tell you US, uh, in one year, um, U.S. saw 60 billion of transaction happening on e-commerce go to 90 billion. That kind of increase they would have seen in four years. Telehealth services, uh, you know, 200 to 300 percent growth. You know, in the year 2020, uh, the telehealth was about 26 million dollars uh, estimation, and we believe that in in uh, you know uh, by the end of this year, the the telehealth a teleconsultation would be 163 million. And the world projects quarter of a trillion, $250 billion opportunity by 2026 for the world. So this is tremendous change, acceleration that uh, you know um, the world is going to see. Baiju, for example, saw an increase of uh, you know, average time spent by 20 minutes. So world is going through a tremendous amount of digitalization, digitalization and herein lies an opportunity for us. So going to my uh, last slide, um, a lot of changes, a lot of uh, digitalization. So what do I believe that 2020 to 2030 uh, requires? An opportunity for us to drive is a population scale AI. We are data rich. We have 12% of world AI resources in India. And I'll tell you, just in 2018, we were 8% to now 2021 in three years, we are now 12%. We have to look at 5G adoption. You know, 2G, 3G, all 
were evolution. They were connecting uh, our you know, phones and enabling our technology through phones. 5G is going to connect everyone with everything. Cloud and data centers today in India, we have 500 megawatt of data center capacity. We believe in the next few years, 500 more is going to be added. And my belief that's a linear estimation is going to grow much more. You start looking at you know, the local cloud service providers and others, they're already planning much more. I also feel that manufacturing, um, fabulous uh, uh, ecosystem, design-led ecosystem needs to continue to grow because if we need to contribute uh, to the $5 trillion uh, economy that our country is planning, which I do believe is on the right trajectory, we need to focus on some of these areas. Uh, you know, now, how can we leverage our population scale AI? What is the platform that we need? How do we drive some standards? What are some regulatory requirements? So I truly believe that we will be driving the next decade for the world. And I truly believe that exciting opportunities lie ahead of us. So I want to finish with a quote that, uh, you know, I uh, uh, coined with my, for my team uh, to look at how can technology uh, impact lives of people. I want to end with technology, evolution, innovation by itself is lifeless. It goes as a document, as a patent filed somewhere, unless you put it to use such that it creates benefit for lives and livelihood of humanity. And this is our chance. Thank you very much.